I love a bit of William Blake. He was around in the 1700s and he was a great artist, a great painter, a great writer, a great mystic actually. He saw visions of angels and when he was a little child God looked through his window and gave him a wave. I went to Feltham Vale which is the only place Blake lived at that was outside of London. And he only lived there for a few years. It's just down the road from Bognor Regis on the southern coast of England. He moved there with his wife into a beautiful little cottage and this is the remains of the cottage now which is currently owned by the Blake Society. Now Blake didn't often leave London he loved it so much, but he did move to Feltham Bow. In fact, he was invited there by a various set of artists. And he moved there with his wife and also his sister, Catherine. They moved there in the year 1800, September the 18th. It was a Thursday morning. And they had 16 heavy trunks and portfolios of prints of his. And by the time they arrived at the cottage, it was half past 11 at night. Blake wrote in a letter a little poem about his journey there. He wrote, Away to sweet Feltham, for heaven is there, the ladder of angels descends through the air. On the turret its spiral does softly descend. And it was while he was living there that he saw an angel. It was supposed to be the angel Gabriel came down through the sky and stood in his garden. Blake settled in quite quickly and he wrote in a letter to the artist Flaxman, This is a perfect model for cottages. Feltham is a sweet place for study because it is more spiritual than London. Heaven opens here on all sides her golden gates. Voices of celestial inhabitants are most distinctly heard and their forms more distinctly seen. It was at Feltham, when he was walking along by the seaside, that he saw the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. He found the cottage and the surrounding lands suitable for his artwork and for his thoughts. The sea was just down the road and he said that as the morning sun streamed upon him he saw in vision that each particle was a man, human formed, and that the grains of sand, the rocks, the clouds were men seen afar. The privacy at Feltham Vale would have been ideal for Blake. When he was living there, there were none of these other houses that now situate around it. When he lived in London, he used to like to wander naked in his garden with his wife, pretending to be Adam and Eve. Here at Feltham, he would have been more than, well, not laughed at here. No one would be able to spy on him, for there was not another soul or house for quite a way. It was here in Feltham that Blake could put himself into a spiritual trance and call upon the poets of ancient days so that he could draw their heads and make portraits of them, Homer, Cicero, Dante, Chaucer, just to name a few. Even Shakespeare himself appeared to William Blake to sit as his muse. Jerusalem, the emanation of the great Albion. This is Blake's poem about how the spiritual city of Jerusalem comes down from the heavens and reappears on the, well, the soils of England that becomes Albion. He's bringing forth the old ways, but with a new fourfold dimension to it and creates the celebrated city of Golganusa. It is created by the character called Los. In Blake's writing, Los is the character who represents poetry he is the creative imagination. In Blake's poem, Loss, he creates Golganusa, which is the city of the art. He also creates Jerusalem, which has the freedom and liberty of life. He creates another called Erin, which is the belief that all living things, especially the body and its impulses, are holy. But just as Blake's character Loss and his wife, any Farman, had to leave Golganusa, so too, Blake and his wife Catherine had to leave Feltham Vale. He returned to London and continued his revolutionary thought and imagination.